Or ladies and gentlemen, my name's Justin Bright. Up. So today we have a fly problem, okay? During the winter time, the bottom of my chicken coop got about four inches of poop trapped between the two layers of fencing in the bottom to keep out the, the predators. And it insulated the chicken coop, but it kind of turned into cement, so I had to wash it out. Now that it's all washed out at once, the flies are going nuts. So we're gonna try to trap them today. We're gonna use two different methods. We're gonna use uh, egg attractant in one of the, yeah, the egg attractant I think is in this one here, egg. And then over here, we're going to try the Star Bar milk jug trap with its uh, attractant that comes with it. Now, I don't know how long it's gonna take for the egg to get rotten and to start attracting things, so uh, we're gonna try these at the same time. I can only assume this one's gonna work faster because it works right out of the box, whereas the egg needs time to get rotten. I don't have any rotten eggs around. I put a regular egg in here, I put warm water in here, it's been sitting in the sun, so hopefully that'll help get the process started. But we're going to go put these both out there and see how many flies we can trap. This is just a jug of water to fill this one because the directions say I'm supposed to fill this with a half gallon of water. So I filled this one a little over half and we're going to put that in here. It says definitely do this outside first. So we're going to do that. We're going to get one of these that comes with two. You can get more of these at the store or wherever. You know. Oh yeah, it smells kind of like fish bait. And it looks like there are multiple bags of attractant in each bag. For the trap, what you got here is just this lid that goes on with holes in the top that lets them the flies come through into their death in the bottom. So let's go ahead and put one in each trap and we'll go set them out there and see what happens. All right, so the purposes of fairness, they're both about the same distance from the chicken coop. The egg one is the closest one to the camera. The one with our store-bought um, bait is furthest away from the camera. And we'll just let these sit out here and see how they do. The egg one is kind of foamy on the top. You can see it's kind of white uh, on the top there where I shook it up. All right, so I've let these traps set for over a week now. And I think we finally learned what the best trap is to catch flies and other insects. And we'll show you, but it's not what you think, okay? It's not what you think at all. We have a little audience here to help us along. Okay, so the one on our right over here is the one we put the egg in. It didn't catch very many flies. At first there were a few flies on top, little tiny ones and it didn't work very well i decided to add some sugar water to it and i'll show you why in a little bit now over here this is the store-bought one it did catch quite a few flies but not near as many as is advertised and as other people have caught 
And so you might wonder, why is that? Why didn't we catch very many flies here? Well, the answer to that question is because I have an even better trap. And it's funny because I was perplexed. I was like, well, everybody says that the flies love rotten eggs more than anything. Why, why aren't they, you know, why aren't we catching them? They're, they're flying around, so why aren't they catching them? And someone pointed out, they said, well, that's because you have a better trap that has better stuff in it. And it's catching all the flies. I'm like, well, yeah, that's true. So here it is. We have the Y trap. Okay, so the Y trap, like this, the stuff it comes with, I don't know if it's any good. It wasn't when I first bought the Y traps. But you can see there's all these bugs in the bottom here, box elder bugs, all different types of bugs, and a whole bunch of flies up here. And how this works is I just fill it with sugar water, okay? Because if you fill your, you know, hummingbird feeders with sugar water, they just become yellow jacket feeders and bug feeders. They come and they eat out of the, the hummingbird feeders, right? So what we've done instead is just put the hummingbird juice right in these Y traps, W-H-Y, and uh, they just get flies and yellow jackets and everything in there. Today's a cool day, so we don't have a lot of activity going on right now. But you can see there's a definite difference here. This is like, what, uh, half inch full from the top here. And then there's all these bugs. I didn't even put any bait on here. This is like, since last year, I haven't put any bait in here. It's just been this. And the, all these box cellar bugs and, and we even got yellow jackets and things are getting up in here and dying. And there's not even any bait down in here. It's just the sugar water. So that's pretty strange, isn't it? Thanks for watching the video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe me. God bless you, your family, and all God has for you to do. Now, I, I'm out here chicken farming. I got a word for you guys, okay? There's places where they say agriculture is number one or other things. I want to make it very clear that God is number one, okay? The people come second, okay? Family and others. First it's your family, then others. But your family and others come second, okay? Then it's businesses, agriculture, farmers, all that third, right? And then fourth would be the government and all these sorts of things. And the thing is, is that a lot of people in politics right now, uh, whether they're running for office, they have been in office, whatever it is, a lot of them, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them uh, are there because of whoever, you know, has the money, well, who, whatever industry is big in that area, or because of existing people in government that want them there for other special interest reasons. And the thing is, is that when people are in government, they got to swear to uphold and follow the Constitution of the United States against enemies foreign and domestic, okay? They're supposed to ensure that the people have unalienable, guy-given rights that are protected, that they have the right to be safe and secure in their homes, persons, and effects, okay? Against uh, the government, against unlawful seizure and all these other things, but also against uh, drug dealers and rapists and child molesters and all these sorts of things. And right now in the state of Washington, uh, I, I, I've read in the news and I've been told that they've suspended uh, prison and jail sentences for rapists right now. And before COVID-19, they only gave them 90 days in jail. Okay. And, and they're arresting people for opening their businesses during COVID-19. They can face a year of jail, but the, the rapists and the, the pedophiles don't get that. And a lot of, and then they're giving people that have been on drugs, they're giving them free beer and, uh, and tobacco to smoke over in King County, Washington. I think it's very important that we put God first and people first. If the government does not submit to God, and if it does not serve the people, then in my opinion, it has no function. Its only function then is not to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States, but to ensure that it helps its special interest groups instead. And so some people, that run for office or are in office already are just there. They think that their only function is to help the rich people that got them there. And that's what they say. You say, what are you going to do if you get elected? Well, some people say, well, I'm going to help the farmers or I'm going to help the corporations. I'm going to help the businesses. I'm going to get uh, internet installed, free internet that the people are paying for with taxes, or I'm going to get more health care, or I'm going to outlaw the people's rights through incrementalism and all that. They, they, they get rid of the people's rights. And, you know, and some people ask me, they say, well, Justin, why don't you run for office? And a lot of people have asked me to run for office. And there's three very good reasons. One, I'm not rich. Since I'm not rich, I don't have the finances to uh, run for office or to advertise. 
for office. Number two, I don't have a license to be a uh, sheriff in the state of Washington. You gotta pay to go through some sort of state brainwashing and programming, whatever their education is before you can do that. And I would love to do that if somebody wanted to finance me. Also, I don't have a bar license and I don't have experience being a crooked attorney. If you're going to run for office to be an attorney or a judge in Washington state, you're required to have a bar license and to have lots of experience in the crooked courts. Okay. And, and I don't, I don't have either. I don't, I, well, I have experience in the crooked courts, but I don't have a bar license and it wouldn't do any good anyway, as far as I know, uh, to, to be an attorney or to be a judge in the crooked courts. Um, because if a judge does something wrong in Washington state, uh, they get fired. And I'm not saying they do something wrong against the people. They do something the state doesn't like. They do something a prosecutor doesn't like. They get fired. That's just the way it goes. So the thing is, is that with that being the case, it doesn't do any good for me to get involved in the judicial branch of government. It would only, you know, people, like I said, people have begged me to run for sheriff. I think right now we have a pretty decent sheriff as far as Drew Heyer. I'm only concerned about what would happen when he retires or, you know, passes away uh, at the moment because I don't know if we have anyone that's any good to replace him. But even being a sheriff, it's very frustrating if you catch dangerous criminals and you turn them over to the prosecutor and the judge and they decide to just let them go. And if, if they tell you you have to arrest somebody who tries to stop crime, that's even more frustrating, right? So there's a lot of challenges um, in running for office and, and, and that's something I'd be willing to do, but you gotta put God first. You gotta put God first. You gotta uphold and defend the people's rights. And see, in, in that respect, I don't think any rich people, any special interest people would support me getting into office. And I don't think that uh, you know, I'd have the advertising campaign. Um, I don't know if I'd have the support of the people, you know, but uh, and maybe the people don't want rights. Maybe maybe the people have decided they want to be slaves. I don't know, you know. And if that's what they want, then then I don't know why they would vote for me. Anyways, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you learned something, and God bless you. Bye. Do you want to learn to follow the commands of the Almighty One True God? If you do, go to ChristianCourts.com. There's a free PDF book you can download, audiobook, and video where you can listen and learn God's laws. Make America great again. Help establish Christian law in communities all across the world. God bless you. This video is brought to you today by Blazing Hog 4G LTE. Get blazing fast internet speeds up to 150 megabits per second. You get $49.99 off when you use the code and the phone number in the description of this video or the code right below my finger here, the coupon code. It works anywhere, rain or shine, within five miles of an AT&T or T-Mobile cell tower. Check it out. All you have to do is call 1-888-306-7062 and mention account number SR2808 when you call. Now enjoy the rest of this video. That's an order, son. If you live in the United States of America, then you need how to win in court because you never know when an organized criminal gang will arrest you and put you in jail because they want your wife. Maybe they want your car. They want your house. They've given you a ticket. Maybe you had to defend yourself against others. And now you're on trial for murder. Well, if you go to how to win in court, you've got a better chance of making it through without having any kinds of problems. It happens suddenly when they kidnap you and you're not expecting it. Are you prepared? Be prepared. It's the motto of the Boy Scouts. Come on, be prepared.
How to win in court is in the description of this video and in the cards. So unless you want to go to a resort with free cable TV, free cellmate, room and board, I suggest you go to how to win in court. Don't throw your computer into the recycle bin. Make your computer great again. Go to www.justuselinux.com.